Article 7, Section 3, Part 2. This is a continuation of what is used to determine player salary. D, incentive compensation. Any performance bonus shall be included in salary only if that bonus would be earned if the team's or player's performance were identical to the performance in the immediately preceding salary cap year. The NBA or Players Association, if they believe that the performance of a player and his team during the immediately preceding cap year doesn't, doesn't fairly predict the likelihood of the players earning a performance bonus uh, during any salary cap year covered by the contract, uh, then they will jointly select a basketball expert to determine whether, in the case of an NBA challenge, if it's very likely the bonus will be earned or, in the case of a Players Association challenge, if it's very likely the bonus will not be earned. The party initiating a proceeding before the expert shall carry the burden of proof. In the case of a rookie or veteran who did not play during the immediately preceding cap year who signs a contract containing a performance bonus, or in the case of a player that's signed or acquired by an expansion team whose contract contains a performance bonus to be paid as a result of the player's achievement of agreed-upon benchmarks relating to the team's performance during its first cap year, then the performance bonus will be included in salary if it is likely to be earned. And once again, if that is not uh, a decisive thing that is agreed upon between the NBA and the Players Association, then they will again hire that expert to make that determination. In the event that either party initiates a proceeding, the player's salary must plus the full amount of any disputed bonuses shall be included in team salary during the pendency of the proceeding. In the event that the NBA and Players Association can't agree on an expert, then a grievance arbitrator will take on the determination. All incentive compensation described in Article 2, Section 3BIII and 3C shall be included in salary, i.e. physical conditioning, academics, summer training, and promotional appearance incentive compensation. Part E, international player payments. The excluded international player payment amounts are listed on page 175, and any amount in excess of these amounts to be paid by, or by the NBA to any basketball team other than an NBA team or other entity, organization, rep, or person for the purpose of inducing that international player to enter into a player contract shall be deemed salary to the player. And any amount up to these amounts... Uh, shall not be deemed salary to the player. The excluded international player payment amount can be paid in a single or multiple installments, uh, and it may be used by an NBA team whenever it signs a player to a new player contract, except that the excluded international player payment amount may not be used more than once in any three-season period with respect to the same player. It shall be deemed to have been used as, as of the date of the player contract to which it applies, regardless of when it is actually paid. And a schedule of payments shall not be deemed a multiple use of the amounts. No amount to be paid shall be counted toward the minimum team salary obligation. And within two business days, following the NBA's receipt of the notice of the payments, um, they should provide the Players Association with written notice as well. Teams shall be prohibited from making any international player payments to a basketball team other than an NBA team or organization, rep, or person for the purposes of getting that international player into that contract uh, to enter into an, a contract with an Exhibit 10 or two-way contract. So they're not allowed to use these amounts to get an international player to put him on a two-way contract. Part F, one-year minimum contracts. The salary of every player who signs a one-year, 10-day, or rest-of-season contract for the minimum player salary shall be the lesser of one such minimum player salary or two, the portion of such minimum player salary that is not reimbursed out of the league-wide benefits fund. Part G, insurance premium reimbursement. This shall not be included in the computation of the player's salary. Part H, averaging. 
pursuant to Article 11, player salary for each salary cap year shall be deemed in certain circumstances to be the average of the aggregate salaries for, that, for each such salary cap year. Part I, existing contracts. These shall continue to be calculated in accordance with the salary cap rules that were in existence at the time the contract was entered into, except as provided in Article 2, Section 6D, and Article 8, Section 5. Part J, existing rookie scale contract increases. The salary of every player whose compensation under his rookie scale contract is increased via Article 8, Section 5 shall equal the greater of the player's salary under his contract prior to the application of the existing rookie scale conforming increases via Article 8, Section 5, or the player's applicable minimum player salary, and shall not include any portion of the increases paid to the player that is reimbursed out of the league-wide benefits fund. The increases shall be excluded from the calculation of the player's salary and each team's team salary, and thus will not affect, for example, the amount of room, if applicable, a team has below the salary cap, the amount of traded player exceptions, etc. Section 4. Determination of Team Salary Part A. Computation When computing team salary, all the following amounts shall be included. The aggregate salaries of all active players and former players via this agreement, attributable to a particular cap year, including, without limitation, salaries paid to players whose contracts have been terminated via the waiver procedure, except that if the waiving team elects in writing to have the player's salary stretched, then the amount to be included in team salary shall equal the, quote, stretched salary amounts. Any amount called for in a retired player's player contract paid or to be paid to the player and the aggregate of such amounts shall be allocated pro rata over the then current and each remaining salary cap year on the basis of the remaining unearned protected compensation in each such salary cap year at the time of retirement. Amounts paid or to be paid pursuant to awards for or settlements of grievances between a player and a team concerning compensation uh, need to follow these rules as if the grievance relates only to such season. One, when a player initiates a grievance seeking the payment of compensation for the current or future cap year that the team asserts is not owed, 50% of the disputed amount shall be included in team salary. If the grievance is resolved during or prior to the salary cap year to which it relates, the disputed amount payable by the team in excess of the 50% allocation shall be included in team salary, or alternatively, the amount by which the 50% exceeds the disputed amount payable by the team shall be subtracted from the team salary. Now, if it's resolved after the, after the conclusion of the cap year to which it relates, then the disputed amount in excess of the 50% shall be included in team salary or alternatively shall be subtracted from team salary um, for the cap year in which the grievance is resolved. When a player initiates a grievance for a season covered by a prior cap year that the team asserts is not owed, disputed amounts payable by the team shall be included in team salary for the cap year in which the grievance is resolved, but only to the extent that it had been previously excluded from the team salary. If a grievance relates to a player's compensation for more than one season, for the purposes of determining that disputed amount with respect to the following the seasons following the resolution of the grievance, the aggregate amounts payable to the player for all seasons pursuant to the resolution of the grievance, whether by award or settlement, shall be allocated to such season in proportion to the amount of compensation that was in dispute, unless, in the case of an award, the grievance arbitrator allocates the amounts payable to the player to specific seasons. If a team delays or attempts to delay in any manner the processing or resolution of a grievance for the purpose of creating or increasing its room in any cap year or for the purpose of reducing or deferring a tax payment to the NBA, then that conduct shall constitute a violation of Article 13. Also in the determination of team salary, computation is going to involve salaries anticipated to be included in team salary based upon any agreement disclosed to the NBA pursuant to Article 2, Section 13AI, including a player's contract whose validity is conditional on the passage of a physical examination, except to the extent that the salary is less than a player's free agent amount. 
also with respect to a veteran free agent who last played for a team who is an unrestricted free agent would be the free agent amount that is attributable to the veteran free agent. With respect to a veteran free agent who last played for a team who is a restricted free agent, it would be the greater of the free agent amount, the salary called for in an outstanding qualifying offer other than a two-way qualifying offer, or if the restricted free agent has also tendered a maximum qualifying offer uh, than the salary called for in such outstanding maxim- maximum qualifying offer, or the salary in any first refusal exercise notice issued with respect to such veteran free agent. Also in computing, the aggregate salaries in outstanding offer sheets. An amount with respect to a team's unsigned first round pick. An amount with respect to the number of players fewer than 12 included in a team's team salary. Value or consideration received by retired players. The amount of any salary cap exception that is deemed included in team salary. All right, so that was all the computation involved in determining team salary. Next, section B, expansion. The salary of any player selected by an expansion team in the expansion draft and terminated before the first day of the season via the waiver procedure shall not be included in the expansion team's team salary except to the extent that the salary is paid for the purposes of determining whether the expansion team has satisfied its minimum team salary obligation for such season. Section C, assigned contracts. For the purposes of calculating team salary with respect to any player contract that is assigned, the assignee team shall, upon assignment, have included in its team salary the entire salary for the then current salary cap year and for all future salary cap years. Section D, free agents. Until a veteran free agent re-signs with his team, signs with another NBA team, or is renounced, he will be included in his prior team's team salary at one of the following amounts, which is, quote, the free agent amounts. So here are the free agent amounts. As it pertains to a qualifying veteran free agent, it will be, he will be included at 150% of his prior salary if it's equal to or greater than the estimated average player salary for the prior salary cap year and 190% of his prior salary if it was less than the estimated average player salary for the prior cap year. A qualifying veteran free agent following the second option year of his rookie scale contract will be, will be included as follows. For the 17-18 cap year at 200%, if it was equal to or greater than the estimated average player salary for the prior cap year, and 250% if it was less than the estimated average player salary for the prior cap year. For every subsequent cap year, 250% if it was equal to or greater than the average salary, or 300% if it was less than the estimated average salary. Now for an early qualifying veteran free agent, it's 130% of his prior salary, provided however that the player's prior team may renounce his rights to sign the player pursuant to the early qualifying veteran free agent exception, in which case the player will be deemed a non-qualifying veteran free agent for the purposes of this section. For a non-qualifying veteran free agent, he'll be included at 120% of his prior salary. If the player's prior salary was equal to or less than the minimum player's salary, he'll be included at the portion of the then-current minimum annual salary that would not be reimbursed out of the league-wide benefits fund. At no time shall a player's free agent amount exceed the maximum player salary applicable to that player or be less than the portion of the minimum annual salary applicable to the player that would not be reimbursed out of the league-wide benefits fund. At no time shall a free agent amount for a vet free agent following the second or third season of his rookie-scale contract exceed the max amount the team may pay the player. If a two-way player completes a two-way contract, 
The player's free agent amount shall be the minimum annual salary applicable to the player completing a standard NBA contract for the zero years of service minimum annual salary. And for the purposes of this section only, a player's prior salary, quote, prior salary, means his regular salary for the prior season, plus any signing bonus allocation and the amount of any incentive compensation actually earned for such season under the player contract in effect when the player finished the prior season. Section E, first round picks. A first round pick shall be included at 120% of his applicable rookie scale amount or the rookie scale cap hold amount until such time as the player signs with the team or until the team loses or assigns its exclusive draft rights to the player. In the event that the first round pick signs with a non-NBA team, the rookie scale cap hold amount should be excluded from the team's salary beginning on the date he signs with a non-NBA team or the first day of the regular season, whichever is later, and should be included again on the following July 1 or the date the player's contract ends or the player is released from his non-NBA contractual obligations, whichever is earlier, unless the team renounces its exclusive rights to the player. If after the following July 1 or any subsequent July 1, the player signs another or remains under a contract with the non-NBA team, the player's applicable rookie scale cap hold amount will again be excluded and will again be included on the following July 1 or the date the player's contract ends or when he's released from the non-NBA team. A team may elect to not sign a first round pick uh, and have that rookie scale cap hold amount excluded from its salary um, at any time prior to the first day of any regular season by providing the NBA with a written statement that they will not do so and also a written statement from the first round pick renouncing his right to accept any outstanding required tender. After making the election to do so, the team shall be prohibited from signing the player during that cap year, uh, but will continue to possess the rights and the amount should be included. The rookie scale amount should be included again um, on the following July 1. When the first round pick provides a team with a written statement renouncing his rights to accept that year's outstanding required tender, the player shall no longer be permitted to accept it. In the event that the first round pick doesn't sign a contract with the team that holds his rights during the cap year immediately following the draft, the quote applicable rookie scale amount for that first round pick means with respect to any subsequent cap year, the rookie scale amount that would apply if the player were drafted in the draft immediately preceding such cap year at the same draft position at which he was actually selected. Section F, incomplete rosters. If at any time from July 1 through the day prior to the first day of the regular season, a team has fewer than 12 players in the team's salary, then the team's salary shall be increased by an amount calculated as follows. There are two steps. Step one, subtract from 12 the number of players included in team salary. Step two, if the result in step one is positive, multiply the result by the minimum annual salary applicable to the players with zero years of service under the minimum annual salary scale for that cap year. Now, the only players who shall be counted are players under contract with the team who are included in team salary, free agents who are included, players who have been given offer sheets, and unsigned first round picks who are included. Section G, renouncing. To renounce a vet free agent, a team must provide the NBA with a written statement effective no earlier than the July 1 following the last season covered by the player's contract. The NBA shall notify the Players Association within two business days. If a team renounces a vet free agent, the player will no longer qualify as a qualifying vet free agent, early qualifying vet free agent, or non-qualifying vet free agent. And the team will only be permitted to re-sign the player with room pursuant to the minimum player salary exception or to a two-way contract. In the event that the team renounces one or more players in order to create room for an offer sheet, and the offeree player's prior team subsequently matches the offer sheet and enters into a contract with the player, the team may rescind the renunciation, and within two business days of the date of the offer sheet is matched, or if that ma offer sheet is conditional on the player passing a physical, within two business days of the player passing the physical. 
whereupon any such unrenounced player may again sign a player contract with the team as a first-round pick, qualifying vet-free agent, early qualifying vet-free agent, or non-qualifying vet-free agent, and will again be included in his prior team's team salary at his applicable, applicable free agent amount. Provided, however, that a team may not rescind the renunciation of a player if, at the time the player was renounced, the team's team salary was at or below the cap, and unrenouncing the player would cause the team's team salary to exceed the cap, or at the time the player was renounced, the team's salary was above the cap, and unrenouncing the player would cause the team's salary to exceed the cap by more than the amount by which the team's salary exceeded the cap prior to the renunciation. A team cannot renounce a player to whom the team has made a qualifying offer until such time as the qualifying offer is no longer in effect. Section H, Long-Term Injuries. Any player who suffers a career-ending injury or illness and whose contract is terminated via the waiver procedure will be excluded from his team's team salary as follows. A team may apply to have the player's salary excluded beginning on the first anniversary of the date of the last regular season or playoff game in which the player played, provided that if the player played in fewer than 10 regular season and playoff games in the last season in which he played, then the earliest date that the team may apply for that exclusion is the later of 60 days following the date where the player last played in a game and the first anniversary of the date during a prior season season in which the player last played in a regular season or playoff game under such contract. A team may not apply to have the player's salary excluded from the team salary prior to the first anniversary of the date of the first regular season game that the player is on the team's roster under the contract in question. The determination of whether a player has suffered a career-ending injury or illness shall be made by a physician selected jointly by the NBA and the Players Association or upon agreement by both a fitness-to-play panel. If after a player's salary is excluded, the player plays in 25 NBA regular season and playoff games in any season for any team, the excluded salary for the cap years covered in such season and subsequent cap years shall thereupon be included in team salary of the team from which the salary was previously excluded. If that 25th game is a playoff game, then the excluded salary shall be included in team salary retroactively as of the start of the team's last regular season game. Provided the foregoing sentence does not apply to a player who has suffered a career-ending injury or illness. After a player's salary for one or more cap years has been included in team salary, the team shall be permitted to reapply to have the player's salary for each cap year remaining at the time of reapplication excluded from team salary in accordance with the rules in this section, including the waiting period. The player shall cooperate in the processing of the application. For clarity, if a player's salary is excluded from team salary pursuant to this section, if at the time of such exclusion the team has previously elected to stretch any salary in respect of one or more current or future cap years, such stretched salary shall also be excluded. If a team applies to have a player's salary excluded and such application is granted, the team will be prohibited from re-signing or reacquiring that player at any time. And if a team makes a request for an exception to replace a disabled player, whether such application is granted or denied, the team will be precluded from applying to have the player's salary excluded from its team salary. Section I, Summer Contracts. From July 1 until the day prior to the first day of the next regular season, a team may enter into player contracts that will not be included in team salary until the first day of such regular season, i.e. a summer contract. No summer contract may provide for compensation of any kind that may be paid or earned prior to the first day of the next regular season or compensation protection of any kind. The only consideration that may be provided to a player signed to a summer contract is per diem, lodging, transportation, compensation in accordance with this paragraph of the Uniform Player Contract, paragraph 3B, and a disability insurance policy, 
covering disabilities incurred while of the players participating in summer leagues or rookie camps for the team. A team that has entered into one or more summer contracts must terminate the contracts no later than the day prior to the first day of a regular season, except to the extent that the team has room for the contracts or is entitled to use the minimum player salary exception. A team may not enter into a summer contract with a veteran free agent who, who last played for the team unless the contract is for one season only and provides for no more than the minimum player salary applicable to the player. Section J, two-way contracts. Two-way player salary shall be excluded from team salary. Thus, for example, a team is not required to have room for an exception to sign, acquire, or convert a player to a two-way contract. Section K, Exhibit 10 Bonus. Any amounts earned via the Exhibit 10 Bonus is excluded in team salary. Section L, Team Salary Summaries. The NBA has to provide the NBPA with team salary summaries and current exceptions twice a month during the regular season and once a week during the offseason. If they fail to do so, they will be notified by the Players Association and they will have two business days to provide the team salary summaries. That concludes Article 7, Section 3, Part 2, covering the continuation of determination of player salary and the full Section 4, covering the determination of team salary. Pages 173 to 193. Happy studying. See you at the top.